Not one person has died from an overdose of marijuana, as opposed to opioids, which have claimed the lives of over 20,000 people in 2015, according to Cannabizer.com. Hi, I'm Mimi Smith, and I'll be talking about why med medical marijuana should be legal, its benefits, how it can help our economy, and multiple people who use marijuana as medicine to help them with their sicknesses. What comes to mind when you hear the word marijuana? I'm sure most would imagine some stoner with bloodshot eyes, couch lock, staring off into space. It's understandable that most people have a negative image of cannabis. It's a plant that has been stigmatized for a very long time. Marijuana is considered a Schedule One drug, so that means it's kind of up there with meth and heroin. As you heard in my opening statement, uh, there have been zero confirmed deaths from overconsumption of cannabis. So I ask, why is marijuana a Schedule One drug? Is it really a drug? What if there's more to this plant than we think? I'm sure by now you may have picked up on the hunch that I'm open to the possibilities of cannabis. And when I say I'm open to the possibilities, I mean I'm open to the idea that cannabis, cannabis has been unnecessarily stigmatized, and I believe in the possibility of marijuana actually being an extremely beneficial medicine. I truly believe that medical marijuana should be legal and accessible for everybody, everywhere. The benefits of marijuana outweigh the risks and can be beneficial for patients suffering from illnesses such as AIDS, cancer, glaucoma, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, and other many are debilitating uh, conditions. Cannabis is proven to be highly effective in the treatment of chronic pain and inflammation. It does this by working with the endocannabinoid system, which is what controls pain and inflammation, and most diseases come with pain and inflammation. And the properties in marijuana, like ter uh, terpenoids, cannabinoids, and flavonoids, lessen and can even eliminate these symptoms. For some, marijuana is a medicine that gives people better quality of life. And think about it, it's safe, it's not life-threatening, unlike some pharmaceuticals that are often overprescribed and improper, improperly used. These medications are highly addictive and often result in many deaths from overdose, as well as allergies from the medication. Cannabis is a $50 billion industry. As of now, most of the revenues go to cartel and criminal gangs. However, through regulation and taxation, we can put a halt to the black market sales and turn it into taxable revenues, as well as boost state economy. In the few states where medicinal use is legal, statistics from Statista.com show that 2017 saw $3.2 billion in medical marijuana sales. Well-regulated medical cannabis programs can create jobs for cultivators of the plants, for the lab, technicians that test for the quality, grade, and safety of the medicine, and dispensary employees. Regulated cannabis can create thousands of jobs in every state. Currently, it is estimated that our government spends $20 billion per year just to fight cannabis use. About $125 of taxpayers' money is used per day incarcerating cannabis offenders. And for the most part, these efforts are failing big time because the plan is readily available. However, it's available illegally. So instead of fighting against cannabis, how about we study it more to help people? People like Christina Evans, who at 31 was diagnosed with syro, uh, syringomyelia. Syringomyelia is a spinal cord, uh, spinal cord disease. According to canaffect.com or canaffect.org, Christina had symptoms such as neck injury, full body numbness, and uh, intense pain throughout her joints and limbs. She had cysts filled with fluid located in her cervical spine cord, which could cause permanent damage to her nerves. Her condition was inoperable and had to be managed with medication. With very little relief with, from her medication, Christina fell into a depression and was angry because she wasn't able to care for her children the way she once was. This is when she started to consider the use of cannabis oil. And she began, she began her first dose at uh, March, tw or March 17, 2015. She took a drop the size of a grain of rice, two times a day, and within, within a couple days noticed an increase of energy, decrease in pain, and with the help of cannabis oil, she was able to wean herself from her medication with very little withdrawal. The oil helped shrink her cysts in her spine and this degeneration was actually reversing. Christina states, I haven't needed a doctor since I started the oil. I haven't had a single injection or as much as pop Tylenol. I am grateful for the second chance to enjoy my life. This is just one of many people who benefit from the medical use of cannabis. A survey conducted on WebMD confirmed that a majority of doctors say that medical marijuana should be legalized nationally and that it can deliver real benefits to patients. While doing an interview with the Huffington Post, well-known doctor and CNN medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta 
once stated that marijuana was absolutely bad for your health. But after much research, he retracted a statement saying, I am more convinced than ever that it is irresponsible to not provide the best care we can, care that may often involve marijuana. Actor Morgan Freeman is an advocate for cannabis and uses it to uh, help ease his pain from a car accident that he had that shattered his left arm. He now suffers from fibromyalgia and says that marijuana is, is the only medication that helps him with his pain. Another actor, Michael J. Fox, uh, consumes marijuana to help with his effects of Parkinson's disease. Statistics on Cannabizer.com state that 92% of medical cannabis users actually benefit from it. So in this speech, I covered why I believe medical marijuana should be legal, its benefits, how it can help our economy, and people who use marijuana to help them with their sicknesses. In conclusion, I would like to ask, should we all have the right to enjoy a pain-free life without having to succumb to the negative and possibly deadly effects of prescription pain meds? Is marijuana really as bad as we have been taught throughout our life? Can marijuana actually be used as a safe and very effective medication? I truly believe so. Thank you guys for your time.